All right, I'm excited today because I am releasing my uh, spring summer trend guide. And along with that trend guide, I get to talk to my favorite trend friend, which is Michael Zindel. And um, we are just gonna be chatting. Michael is a uh, VP of creative and he does a lot of product design, a lot. And so we both get trend boards and we both make trend boards. And so he's always my go-to source when we're talking trends, so. Thanks for joining me, Michael. Hi. Glad um, to be here. Yeah, so I just, you know, I'm I'm releasing my trend trends for the next couple, um, you know, for this season. And I've been doing research and I just wanted to talk to you about it because have you been noticing this with trends lately too? Like I feel like, you know, I like to highlight icons, motifs, animals, things that are easy to put into surface pattern designs. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the trends have been getting a little bit farther away from that lately. Things are more about a vibe, a, a yes. sort of like shapes and like things that are a little bit more abstract and harder to sort of, okay, go draw this like puppy or whatever, you know? Yeah. I feel like, especially in store, the, uh, like, I don't know what, what, like, let's use Target as an example. Like they have their pillars now. So they have like their Opal House Bohemian pillar, and then they have their Magnolia Farmhouse pillar, and then they have, uh, I think, Threshold now, sort of their, like, casual, like, in between, you know, with Studio yeah. Mickey, and I don't see any real icons anymore. It's, like, become a lot of, like, like you said, it's, it's a feeling, it's a vibe, like, you could, you could probably, like, throw stuff in and not know it was missing in the first place because it's not like driven by like, oh, Bohemian for summer is going to be parrots and, you know, cheetahs or whatever, like it was in previous summers. It just feels a lot more like palette and material. I don't even, I, yeah, like material. And like, I, I'm, I, I want to say pattern, but I don't mean pattern like you and I make pattern, like very mm -hmm. like boring, basic, like blink and you miss it you know like, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. so like just I, a lot more like abstract and yeah, yeah and like brush strokey in some cases but also just like yeah we're using tassels we're using rock we're using you know like yeah. just kind of how the product is being made which I think you and I enjoy because we you know get it down we we get into like product yeah. development obviously you do it all the time and I like to think in that way but when you actually have to draw a pattern or draw an illustration it's like you know it, it makes yeah. it a little bit harder when the when the trends start to get more abstract like a lot of like if you look at in Pinterest or like Domino or anything that's like a D DIY it's like oh caning is in or you know that that sort of thing where everyone's like hot gluing dowels and calling it ribbed you know like they're putting mm. ribs on furniture or ribs on walls or you know someone will make an accent wall with like slats but it's like not farmhouse slats it's like modern you know geometry like all those things are real easy to define like to see and define and to call out but to translate is really difficult because like you said, like, well, what does that mean if you wanna put it on a gift bag? Well, not much. Like, what does it mean if you wanna make a, you know, a coffee mug? Uh, I don't know. Like they're, you know, especially yeah. if, you're, if, if it's material based, like say caning or, you know, you were talking about like raffia or weaving or tassels, like once you remove it from that thing, they almost can't live as an icon. They don't have the same, like drawing is not the same as, you know, actual caning yeah. or a pattern of tassels has no, none of the same feel as like, oh, you bought like a lamp with actual tassels hanging from it or whatever. Exactly. So I've been, yeah, I've been noticing that a lot and it's like a struggle to, um, I don't know if it's that like retailers don't want to become so pinned down to like, you know, oh, flamingos or what, you know, whatever the, the icon of the moment is, or if it's just that like the consumer is, more intrepid or like coming out of COVID people are less, less likely to invest money in like a quick turnover. So they want like tried and true, like refreshing. Mm. I don't know, but I don't know either. Yeah. It's not yeah. exciting. I'll tell you that much. It's, it's making it. Yeah, it is. It is tricky. And, and you're right because you can't, I, I do try to sometimes bring those type of like, like tactile material things into my patterns and it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, translate as well. I think there are some of those examples, those sort of like DIY things that get 
popular and then they work for surface pattern like my the thing I was thinking when you were talking about this is like the whole macrame like yeah. um phase of like that was something that people started DIYing and it started coming back and then I saw it in a lot of surface pattern of like actual patterns of like yeah. cool wall art macrame or like plant those planters that yeah, have the um yeah yeah and so I ended up seeing that as like drawn out and working, but um, it is a little bit harder now. Um, So tassels, I've definitely been, you know, I myself have added to things for a while, but like they gets to a point where. Yeah, I know it's true. On a tiger, you know, (laughs) it's really true. No, I know. I was I've been doing that too, and it's like not quite not quite hitting. Um, I've seen a lot of like. sort of spiraling out of like the Y2K trend, but then like all of a sudden I'm seeing a lot of people asking for terrazzo like patterns again, but like recolored in this like cotton candy palette mm, or like so. things that things that I can't even like to adequately describe in words, but like funfetti or like ripped up paper, like things that are very like mm, high school 2000 you know uh I don't know yeah I want to talk about Y2K actually I'm glad you brought it up because that is something that is yeah it keeps kind of I'm I'm like circling around it and I'm curious this is sort of like where I was at with cottagecore now I I get cottagecore we've been through cottagecore but when it was first coming out, I was like, yeah, I get it. It's like a, an aesthetic, but like, what is it really? And, right. and now, you know, I, I understand that it's, you know, prairie, homesteady, wildflowers, like all that stuff. But Y2K is like, I'm seeing it. And if I look up like Y2K aesthetic, it's like a whole thing of in, you know, fashion and whatever. Yeah. Um, and I've seen a couple like image, you know, like trend board images. I, I think I linked to one in my newsletter this, you know, this month that I'm going to be putting out, but, um, but like, I haven't seen it in gift and home and stationary yet. So I'm like, what does this actually mean? Like holographic textures? Sure. But like, what is it really like, how, is, have you seen it actually in product or in pattern or in any way that that is like definable I guess you were saying well, in this terrazzo cotton candy kind of definitely yes. pastel uh palette work is a, a feature I think so I've seen like two versions of it like well for like good thing like I think Spoonflower just did a, a a challenge on it oh yeah so like you can see a lot of things that like people's versions of it there and of course like because it was a challenge it was like all over the roadmap like mm-hmm. both on point and completely like off and left field but I've seen like two versions one is like this uh much more like we, what we were talking earlier where it's like yeah it's holographic like if you were trying to explain it like it's like okay it's kind of like confetti but it's also just sort of like colors and swirls and like nothing that's like iconic Mm -hmm. Um, that's more like, uh, just like a feel, like I just did a program for hairbrushes and the patterns were all very like textural like that. There were no icons, but then there's like, obviously like this other side where it's like, for some reason, I don't get this either Walkmans in pastel colors, which are not from 2000. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and then things like that. And, and I saw like a discussion, I think it was people on like a surface pattern, um, maybe it was Facebook talking about like the spoon flower challenge and someone like summed it up in a way that I was able to digest, which is like, it's not really real. It's like a nostalgic optimization of how people perceived it. And it's probably maybe it's generational, like maybe the way you and I perceived like the seventies and the eighties where like people who lived through that time, when they see like what we think of it, it's mm. not really how it was like it right, wasn't all right, right. Stock and it wasn't all you know peace signs so I feel like it's got this like maybe it's like this generation there's every generation sort of has that like uh comfort food nostalgia kind of thing that they think of as being like the best time ever right mm-hmm. like I always think of it as being like the early 90s that was like the mm-hmm. best time ever and this generation for some reason idolizes like the late 90s early 2000s as like the time things were just like awesome so like there's that level of like optimism like in the Mm. colors and in the like the sort of like party glitter you know all that sort of Britney Spears and insane kind of feel to it that I guess has like this 
this reminiscent Fun kind of appeal quality of like yeah. I was a teenager and I was carefree and whatever. And when I see it through that lens, I really get it. When I don't see it, I'm just like, oh God, candy. <laughs> What's happening like here? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, that that makes sense. And I think I also have seen uh like I think it's creative market that was also kind of called well, they had the Y2K trend, but they were also sort of calling out like the Tumblr-esque trend, aka like early internet like sort of bad oh, graphic yeah. early internet. And, yeah, yeah. and so I guess maybe the Y2K thing is like TikTok does Tumblr, like what, yeah, what yeah, TikTok yeah. thinks Tumblr is or something like that. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And I think pastel is a big part of it too, is a big part of that trend to pull in. And we've and been seeing like, the- see like Oh, sorry. You can see like, you know, just like the project I worked on was hairbrushes. And I, to me, that like totally made sense. I could see it like being in like uh, female and kid fashion or like backpacks or, you know, if you watch Euphoria, you can kind of see how it's bled into like cinematography and mm. just the throwback of like, wait, like you're watching it and you're thinking like, this is supposed to be 2021, but it feels like 1999, right? Like mm. it, you can mm. just the fashion and everything. And there's a couple other shows that have kind of done that too, like Sex Education on Netflix. And like, they have this like throwback vibe, but it's supposed to be current day. So I, I can definitely see like outside of our genre, like where it's sort of taken root. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think sometimes when it takes root in media, then it starts becoming more uh, like tendrils start going out because now you want to, you want to dress like this person or you want to like look yeah, like this person exactly. so like it starts like getting picked up and then you don't even know where it came from so I could see that happening with this this particular that's a good point and I think you know when we used to think about trends like 10 15 20 years ago um it was always it starts in fashion high-end right. fashion it starts in Europe and then it comes to America, high in fashion, and then it trickles down to home, home and gift and stationary and whatever. So like over the course of let's say three years, right? Or four years even. Um, now, because of the internet and because of social media and all that stuff, for the last like let's say five or six seven years I feel like trends are just on top of each other like it's it's happening on the runways and yeah. like you know six months later it's in not just like fast fashion like H&M and stuff but also into like yeah gift and home and all the stuff that we deal with and so um it sounds like maybe this potentially this Y2K trend is something that right now is starting as yet yeah, is actually has a little bit of a, a width uh, a spacing between it before it hits gift yeah. product and all that stuff so um we'll have to, that's one to watch basically that's something yeah, I mean like I'm with you it used to be such a linear you know you saw it and then it was like I don't know if some if someone in if the fashion was like a nautical you know resort wear suddenly nautical would be all over the U.S. now it's like if it even gets here it's in a completely different form or like you said it'll go elsewhere and then circle back like two years later it's really like so convoluted now I don't know yeah which is I mean, why I when like I do good I don't trust people when they say things because it's like it's all sort of point of view it's not really like a map like it used to literally be a map and you could draw like a, re a road and say it's going to be here in about six months and now it's like well <laughs> I don't know like it's like you got to cover all your bases because Lord knows how many are just going to like disappear. <laughs> exactly. And that's why like for, for me, I'm doing trends, you know, I don't have access to like whatever the future. <laughs> right. Of course I don't have that. No one who does trends has access to the future, but you know, these bigger trends, these big trends, uh, like services that, that do it for thousands and thousands of dollars for big companies. Um, you know, they use so many factors to determine right. their trends. Honestly, I'm picking stuff that are, is already in store which means that it was let's say hot like in trend boards yeah. two years ago or a year and a half ago for it to make it to product to make it to stores but yeah. I'm still featuring it and the reason that I feature it is because if it's just starting to be in stores chances are that it's going to last for another two oh, wow. to three to four years so it's yeah. not um you know, it's, it's, it made like the trends that I feature aren't like cutting edge, like just off the runway, but they are usually towards the beginning of the, the curve for what's going to happen with product and with surface pattern and that kind of stuff. So, 
um, that's always something to consider when you're, and, and sometimes I would also say that these days, as you were saying about buyers potentially being, um, or like consumers potentially being a little bit, um, you know, trepidatious about buying something that might turn over very quickly. I think, you know, art buyers are the same way. They want things that are going to last a little bit longer or that are proven. So to be way ahead of the curve these days, isn't necessarily a benefit. You want to be like, a little like, you know, like starting to see something a little bit early. So, but something that at least the buyers have already seen a little bit so that they have some like context for, I feel like. I was just like formulating that same thought when you started, which is like, it's not like, maybe we made it sound terrible, but it's not really that bad a place to be because 90% of the time, someone looking for art isn't going to come to you and say, show me the hottest, newest, rarely ever seen. They're going to come to you and say, I've been seeing X, Y, and Z at Target, at, you know, uh, you know, on domino.com or, you know, apartment therapy. What do you have similar? And then you can pull it out. But like, you know, being on the cusp doesn't really get you anywhere faster anyway so you know i don't i don't know there's always those arguments on like you should only do evergreen trends or you should not chase trends or whatever i i think it's just a matter of you know staying abreast and doing what you do best and you know being able to have a conversation it doesn't mean you have to be able to pull out a portfolio and say you know oh my god look at all this y2k stuff elizabeth and michael said it's so hot like i don't necessarily think that you need to be doing that because the buyer, like in my particular case with this job, came to me and said, Y2K. And I was like, you know, like, I don't want to do that. But then, you know, after you look at the brief for a while, you're like, oh, easy peasy. Like, this is no problem. And that's like how most deals happen. They didn't expect me to have, you know, 30 Britney Spears t-shirts in my back pocket. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. pretty easy to pull it off. So. I love that. Well, s- speaking of uh, trends that we are not a fan of, in my, <laughs> in, in my trend guide, this, this uh, well, always, whenever I do seasonal trend guides, I, I pretty much have to go back over, all, you know, I do three new boards, but yeah. I also do a sort of a summary of what else I'm seeing out there. And a lot of it is, we're still seeing this. We're still seeing this. Yeah. We're still seeing, because as I said, it lasts, as we both said, it lasts for a while. So one thing, uh, of course, that we are still seeing is gnomes. And yeah. I said, because it's yeah. going out to other service pattern designers, I said, guys, let's all work together here. <laughs> let's keep gnomes out of our portfolio so this can die a little bit quicker of a death than it, are, than it has. Because- right to I guess I don't know if it was I'm trying to remember when if it was it must have been 20 it was 2020 when I went to Surtex the last time I went to Surtex right before COVID and I was seeing the gnomes and or and at NY now and and Surtex and I said uh this is coming I don't (laughs) want it to come let's hope it's a fad you know versus a trend that lasts longer and um no two years later we're still doing this so you know, guys, we can band together. To the people out there who are designing things, if you don't love gnomes, you don't have to do them, I promise. <laughs> it's like they're, I joke around and say that they're like the perfect mascot for white privilege because it's like this Scandinavian icon that, that, that had a very specific role that now is like in Valentine's Day. It's taken over leprechauns for St. Patrick's Day. I had a request for gay pride gnomes. Like they're literally... <laughs> in every like what is next like what (laughs) oh lord you're right like taco tuesday with gnomes like i don't know now showing it indigenous people day um exactly like they're i don't know we're still we're we're, i'm seeing like getting less requests but we did do like a ton of every holiday you can think of you know used to be just christmas we did valentine's gnomes we did Halloween gnomes, we did St. Yeah. Patrick gnomes, like, Pride gnomes, like you name it, and there was a gnome in it. And but 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 you know, I don't know. As a aside, most people requesting them say, "I swear to you, I'm trying to stop this." But like, there's, <laughs> there's like a no one's trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah, like when the numbers, like especially with like designing for retailers, like the numbers are what drive it. So if they have 20, you know, items on the floor and three of them are gnomes and they have the biggest numbers, they suddenly want, you know, 10 more gnome things. And it's not until that number drops that 
they'll stop asking for it. So right. you just, I don't know. The problem yeah. with them is like, there's only so many, ways. everybody who draws a gnome, it looks identical to the next yeah. one. Like yeah. they can't look any different. Yeah. So is there any, you know, um, what basically I'm, I'm just thinking about, you know, with considering there's not as many icons. And another thing that I've seen uh, been being discussed about trends is not as many animals. We always look for the, like, what's the animal of the season? Right. What's the thing? What's the next like sloth and llama and all that stuff. And it's not really, nothing's really popping off. And uh, so I don't know if you've seen anything. I mean, I saw doing research, a couple animals that I saw a, a few times were these like sort of more realistic snails like which I think go around go along with like the mushroom the meadow the like you know the wildflowers and stuff like that a little bit more realistic though not just like cutie like spirals but slightly more realistic and then the other thing that I I I mean this has been coming and going for like two or three years and never really got super strong but um pandas mm -hmm. and and koalas those two those two right. kind of I, I see they're, they've been maintaining a steady pace, I feel like. Um, but have you seen any other no. animals that are sticking out a little bit? Not really. I mean, like we just did a huge like summer push and that's all the same type of icons that you would expect over, you know, for summer. So like we're still seeing, you know, flamingo is kind of like it's it, but I would before I get in before I say I think what I'm seeing when I do see animals is less um uh less character animals and more anonymous animals so like like the snails a perfect example like i could i i still see like snails and bugs but like as icons within and like you know that woodland like ferns mushroom snails and bugs but they're all sort of like feelingless you know like they're not it's not like a snail having lunch with a bird you know that mm. kind of thing it's like anthropomorphized or whatever that word right. is yeah <laughs> And the same thing with like, like the flamingo seems to have become like very graphic or it's like, you know, uh, the pool toy was the big, you know, flamingo as a pool toy, um, but less of that whole like flock star or like flamingos interacting or whatever. It's like become sort of like a pattern the way you would use like a polka dot or whatever. Mm. Um, but I feel like I've noticed like when you go, when you go out shopping now, um, you know, I'm still seeing the things we talked about earlier, like the textural pillow thing that you, I think you did a blog, uh, a post on once, like, you know, that bohemian sort of macrame woven stuff and, and like easy botanicals, like branches and leaves and mm. ginkgo and things that are just like, eucalyptus, like, I've been here too. Yeah. Yeah. Like that whole spin off of eucalyptus and, uh, like, like herbaceous type things, but not like, again, like things that are almost like, anonymous like they're not overly colorful it's like you know gray watercolor on white paper or like that kind of whole sort of like we're just making more like I guess like linen and bedding that has moved out of linen and bedding where it's like this safe palette with these safe icons and you glance at it and you kind of just get this eh kind of feel about it but it's pretty but there's nothing that's like iconic and repeat and you know in your face where you're like oh this means I like llamas or this, you know, it's all very anonymous. And I'm seeing that like pillows and curtains and wall decor, like everything has just mm. gotten very like, yeah. Not, well, it better come boring. back because otherwise, <laughs> what are we going to do with ourselves? If it doesn't come I back, know. it will come back. I, but I mean, I think everything goes through, you know, you're going to feel the, yeah. And we're, we're going to be feeling the ripple effect of COVID for years. Like, oh, yes. I don't mean, I don't mean in any other aspect than design, like that right. ripple effect of like how it disrupts supply chain and how it disrupts, you know, I mean, companies fire design first when they, that's what happens whenever there's a downturn mm -hmm. design, people figure it out Not and then right. they realize, you know, they don't have anything. So you're going to see that like companies have been struggling with creativity. Then you have like what happened in China where like factories got rid of their best people because they weren't getting enough orders. Um, all that's going to ripple through. So I think like we'll come out of this at some point where there's like much more excitement and whatever. Oh, yeah. And I think some of like, I were to predict like based on, okay, this is the, what, the third time we thought COVID was going to end. Like, let's just say it ends, right? All of the things that go along with going back to life will probably end up being 
iconic driven trends, right? Like barbecue, birthday, gathering, party, mm. like anything that's about like celebrations, you know, getting together, getting celebrations, together. like that kind of stuff will probably be the first on the upswing, especially in like stationary and gift giving and you know, all the aspects, wedding type themes will probably rebound because of all the canceled weddings, baby booming will happen because of all the COVID babies. Like there's so many roads that you can like look down and go, oh, you know, like there's a million ways this could pan out. You just have to wait for it to pan out. Like it's not going to stay boring. Boring. You know, no, it's not. Forever. It's not. And we're, right. we're also kind of at the end of like the whole gray wash era, like I think mm. that's over. So like True. all the paint companies and decor companies are saying, you know, color is back and pattern is back. And, you know, just seeing a lot of like a return to like bold interiors and magazines. Like you're not, you're not, I mean, like Instagram is rife with people like saying shiplap is over and, you know, mm. farmhouse is dead. And, you know, it'll take years for that to sort of peter out. But I think, I think people who are redecorating are coming out of this and refreshing their homes are going to be looking for something different at some point. Ready like, for color too. I mean, that just makes sense. Yeah. Sitting, sitting at home in a great, you know, the house. first, <laughs> when COVID first hit my first like immediate thing was like, okay, that's um, the end of open concept, uh, like interiors. Yeah. And I mean, not that that was like a new, th I mean, it was a new thought to me, but that doesn't mean, of course, a million other people had that same thought, I'm sure, because we right. all were like, oh, I really wish we had but walls in our house, yeah. <laughs> which is where I am for sure. Um, the best I could do was add curtains to my <laughs> French doors <laughs> so yeah. that we don't see the small children's faces pressed up against it. Yeah. But anyways, um, and, and I did just see like, you know, it was only like two weeks ago. It was like trends for 2022, death of the open concept. I'm like, yeah, obviously we're getting there. <laughs> like, of yeah, course, yeah. no one wants that anymore. So these things, yeah, they do take time to kind of roll out, but you're right. It's like, if we've been sitting around in our gray and, and neutral and farmhouse and black and white, you know, spaces for two years, it's like, we need something bright and it, it will yeah. turn around. So, and I mean, I always need something bright, but you know, uh, other people it'll it'll it goes in waves for sure so yeah, yeah well I love it um I mean I could talk about trends forever obviously <laughs> and uh and I so appreciate your insights because I mean we love to bounce trends off each other but it's it's always so fun to just sort of dig into the topic so um, I will be putting the link in, in this description of this video for the trend guide. If you're not on my newsletter already, you can sign up and get it. And, you know, just keep, keep out there looking for things. So, uh, follow Michael on Instagram for sure, because he is always, uh, all his patterns tend to be pretty cutting edge. So <laughs> he's a good trend source. And um, thank you so much, Michael. Oh, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a share and a subscribe. Thanks so much.